How are you? I'm doing great. Give us a second. I'll give you a, a proper introduction. And uh, there we go. That's Dr. Connor Murray putting down his diet, Dr. Pepper. And I like how much. Hey, everybody. My name's Chip Tito. And I'm hanging out with you guys on the day before Thanksgiving here in 2020. And uh, why not? Let's uh, why not have a doctor to talk to? And uh, there he is right now. And that's Dr. Sean Connor Murray. Doctor, how are you? Doing fantastic, Jim. Happy Thanksgiving. All right. Let me turn that down there. Much better there. All right. Can you tell me that you're doing again? I said uh, happy Thanksgiving. Right. I'm doing there great. Go. So my Can you hear me? battery just went out on my um, on my earplug here. So I will talk to you as I'm walking around, but I can't hear your response. So if you could just tell people who you are and what you do as an introduction, because they're driving around, they don't know what the hell is going on. Fantastic. Right. Can you hear me now, Jim? Do I start talking now? I can hear you right now. So you're going to, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can you hear can you. can hear me fine. So yeah, go ahead and just introduce yourself and then we'll sure. get to I'll the introduce show. myself. My name is Sean Condomori. Um, I'm a doctor. I'm an interventional pain specialist. I'm a spine specialist. We take care of patients who have back pain and neck pain and other chronic pain conditions uh, of, of, of a number of different causes, whether it's arthritis or due to an injury. Uh, and a whole host of causes. And myself and my partners here in Munster and Chesterton and Dyer and um, Hobart, we all are here to help patients out in the region who suffer from chronic pain. Doctor, I um, got in a wreck a bunch of years ago, and every once in a while I am doing my yoga or I'm doing some stretching, and I was doing it Good today, right, yeah, right before the show uh, today, and um, I tweak that thing from time to time, and I'm trying to strengthen that core so that boom, boom, boom. Then I was kind of complaining about it, and then the wife reminded me that I play this one, this what I call jet golf, and I've been playing it a lot without stretching out. And I get out of the car and I go right on the golf course, and it's cold and it's rainy. I'm probably going to play today. And um, just rain, you're going to play golf. Uh, it's called Jed Golf. It's one. It's called one uh, club, two balls, two B, one C, two balls, one okay. club. And I walk it real quick. And I got some guys that like to do it with me. So we're going to be out there. It's probably be five or six of us today out at Wicker Park later. But the point well, is, you invite me, when you invite me out to play golf, play, invite me on a good day though, Jim. I don't want to come out and play golf with you today. All right. Well. There, there is so, no such thing as a bad day for jet golf. There you go. <laughs> only lightning. That's the only time we don't play. But uh, listen, so I've been finding out that as I got older here, I could get out of the car, I could walk to the first tee, I could hit that first shot, and I could just go. I used to run. I Now I just walk briskly. And it's a pretty good 52-minute, 55-minute round. I'm, I'm warm 10 minutes into it. But in that first 10 minute period, I've noticed since I got older that I can't do that anymore, if that makes any sense. Sure and does. I feel like I'm tweaking it. I think I might even be on the verge of an injury where I got to come in and see you. What do you say to that aging athlete that thinks he can just do it all? Well, so I see those aging athletes all the time. I mean, many of the, especially older men who will play golf, they will tell me literally in that very first visit, that consultation visit, they'll say, Doc, I don't care what you do. I just just fix me up so I can get on the golf course. That's their primary motive in life is to get back on the golf course. So, I mean, the, unfortunately, you know, as you get older, you do get stiffer. You, you develop arthritis changes in your spine and in those muscles in your low back, and they're going to get stiffer, and it's going to take a few hours sometimes to loosen up. So if you've got an early morning round, and if you're teeing off at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., you're going to be stiff unless you've literally spent – you know, actually put in time at home before getting on the golf course to actually loosen up. So you're going to have to just loosen up. Otherwise, you are le you're, you have a, a chance, maybe not a high chance, but you have a chance of tweaking something and actually having an injury if you go out there and you swing or test your body when it's tight and stiff. What, uh, let's get a little bit more scientific than tweak. What are you at? What are you at risk of? So I'll give you a, a, a very common story. You take a gentleman or an older woman, um, who have spinal stenosis. They've got spinal stenosis, which is a narrowing of the spine. The spine is narrower. And in the narrow canal, you've got these nerves and you've got disc material and you've got a lot of other sensitive tissues. Now, if you've got spinal stenosis, it's already narrowed. And then you do something that suddenly twists your back, for example, and the, and the muscles and the joints in the spine are a little tight because they haven't really been loosened up. 
then you're going to get a sudden inflammation in that area, which is already narrow. You add the inflammation, it becomes even narrower. And if it's even narrower, that's more, that's compression on those nerves and other sensitive tissues. And you're going to have a flare up of pain. That's a very common story. So if you're lucky, you take some anti-inflammatories, you stretch, and then that's gone. If you're not quite as lucky that those symptoms persist for days or weeks, uh, sometimes longer than a couple of weeks, and then you end up seeing the doctor. Uh, so it's best to avoid that, you know, preventatively get out there and stretch and loosen up and not just sort of like a, um, a quick hold the racket up in the air and do this for a minute or 30 seconds. That doesn't count. I'm talking about actually getting down and stretching probably at home before you leave for the golf course. He's Dr. Sean Connor Murray. You have any questions about pain? We're going to talk about COVID now and going into the holiday and how to stay balanced, but let's get uh, specific on this because I do bring guys out that jet golf with me and the younger guys never stretch, but I have another guy who's maybe a couple years older than I am, Kirk Domino Smith, and he's a really good golfer and his back was hurting him. And I did what, what a friend of mine, that's a, childhood or orthopedic guy he's always been uh pushing me to do the yoga so it's almost like a strategic yoga for me i do the yoga so that i can play golf and i got him on it now and now it's sometimes it's hot yoga i don't do that as much i do it at home more but i'll go to the hot yoga once in a while but i'm like maybe three to four times a week and as long as i do it as long as I do it, A, I feel a lot more centered, you know, eat less, you know, stress less, all that stuff you got talking about. Move more. And move more. But, I mean, I feel almost as if the yoga was specifically made for the aging golfer. Does that, is there any truth to this? Oh, totally, totally. You're, stre- you're stretching. When you, yoga is a serious amount of stretching. And that stretching of, of you know, entire spine primarily is very, very powerful. That's going to be very helpful for you. So, so let's say if I had to go to the next step and I come into you and the yoga's not doing it, and the anti-inflammatory is not doing it, what is the next step? Not that I'm going to. I'm just bringing it out sure. for others. So I, I would tell you that if, in addition to the stretching before going on the golf course, Jim, it doesn't hurt to maybe even if you know you're going to be tight, if you know you're going to potentially you know, set things off, you might, might, not, might not hurt to take your anti-inflammatory before getting on the course you know, with some food in your stomach whatever it is that you normally take. Maybe it's just over-the-counter Advil or Aleve, or maybe it's a prescription medication like Voltaren or Relafin or one of the other medicines your doctor might give you. It wouldn't hurt to maybe take a dose in the morning before getting on the course. There's no harm in that. As, as long as you don't have any serious kidney issues or other, other medical problems, there's no reason why you can't take the anti-inflammatory. That may help you. Uh, but, you know, nothing, nothing is going to beat actually stretching and loosening up beforehand. What about, uh, say, a guy lets it go, and then all of a sudden he's got this stenosis, and you got to take it to the, uh, he's in a lot of pain, it won't go away, you've tried the yoga, you've tried the other things, um, and they come and they land on your doorstep, with I, which I know happens, because I know all buddies time. that have done that, and you know, they wait too long, and then they got a problem. What are some of the first stages that you send them through medically? Yeah, so... Very often what we do is we find that they're, like we said, stiff. They have, they've lost their range of motion. They're very, they, as soon as you get an attack of the pain, then all of a sudden everything goes downhill. You stop stretching entirely. You stop moving. You start, you start babying your body, and you start compensating for the pain that you have in a certain part of your body by, by not moving that part of the body. Then it gets even tighter and more stiff. You have more muscle issues. So we will start them on physical therapy. Right away, we'll start these patients on physical therapy to have the therapist start loosening them up. Loosening them up, and oftentimes in a in a week, um, three or four sessions, they're really significantly improved. If they are not, then there are two most common sources of pain for these patients typically, and that is a spinal stenosis, and the second is a facet syndrome, meaning that you have spinal arthritis, arthritis in the joints of the spine. So then we will treat the joints or we'll treat the spinal stenosis, and that might be an injection. We I would take them to the op- uh, small procedure room like an operating room and using special technologies will be a special injection exactly at the source of their pain. We'll identify precisely where it's coming from and take down that inflammation with just an anti-inflammatory injection. That's, it's, it's a simple, easy treatment and very safe. And it helps a lot. As and, long as and, the patient's and that is the it. one that I know a lot of my guys in my age group and they go in for this shot that you're talking about. It doesn't have steroid. It might be a steroid. Yeah. Okay. 
It might be a steroid because if it is, for example, if you've got like a very inflamed facet joint at the lowest part of your spine, if you aren't getting better from therapy or anti-inflammatories by mouth, you drop a small dose of steroid right onto that joint or into that joint, and that helps take away that inflammation. Okay, now this is the point where we get you to grab that spine behind you and show us where you're talking about that last joint or whatever. This is a good point. If you're watching, you get to see it. It looks like he dug up a dinosaur, but it is an actual uh, remnant of a spine. This is kind of an example of a human spine. Down here is the pelvis. Yeah. This is the back of the spine. This is the front of the spine. Mm -hmm. Again, this is the pelvis where your baby comes out when you're delivering. This is your lumbar spine right here. The lower, the, the, the last five bones in the spine are the lumbar spine. And typically if somebody has spinal stenosis, let's just say like right here, for example, that you see that yellow thing, that's a nerve. If that, if there, and that little opening, that tunnel that the nerve is coming out of is called a neuroforamina. The nerve comes off the spinal cord and it goes through this little tunnel. And if that tunnel is even further narrowed than it looks like on this model, you can see there's not a whole lot of room there. It's just, you know, this, this may be three times the amount of space as the nerve. Now, if you add a bulging disc in that area, or if you add a bunch of inflammation, like edema or swelling, you know, think of when you twist your ankle, your ankle gets all swollen. You twist your spine the wrong way, it's going to get all swollen in here. And that's going to compromise that nerve. And you're going to get pressure, sometimes pain in your buttock or down your leg. So I might put an injection right in that area to take the inflammation away from that area. That, that's called a transforaminal epidural injection. Right. So that's one thing we talked about. So that, that is so cool. I just wanted to, you know, I, I kind of tricked him into bringing the spine out, but it, I'll die. All you have to do is mention the spine and the, and the model and doctor gets very passionate. Oh, I about love it. Spine. I mean, this is this, so this is what I, this is what I do every day, Jim. I teach patients exactly the same, what we're talking about now. I show them the model. We talk to them about where their pain is so they can understand it. If, if we, if they have a better understanding about what's going on, it's going to help them in their care. They're going to just progress faster. They're going to have a better recovery from whatever I do for them. So we want patients to get well. He's so if you look in the back of the spine, let's look right here. So there's, sure. a joint, there's a joint on either side, here and here. On, there's two joints, one on the, on the left and one on the right, at each and every level, going all the way up. I'm going to point to just one of those joints. So this is a joint right here. I'm not sure if you can see it. And I'm, I, for those on the radio right now, um, we are looking at a spine with Dr. Sean Connor Murray of Midwest Interventional Spine Specialist. I'll describe it. He's got a big model in his hand. It's very detailed. It's got nerves coming out of it. But he is pointing to two sides of the spine, and they look like maybe minor pieces of hail. How does that sound? Yeah. Yeah, right. it sounds pretty good. Right there, I'm pointing with my pen. I'm pointing to one of the joints. That's called the facet joint. Um, that lumbar facet joint is just like a joint in your hip or in your knee. It has fluid in it like your knee has. It has synovial membranes, which is a tissue that lines the joint just like your um, knee joint. And that membrane and that cartilage and that bone can wear down just like inside your knee or your hip. And when that happens, you're going to get pain in here. And that joint isn't going to move as well, and it's going to hurt when you move that joint. So if you twist your body like this, you can notice how that joint is opening and closing. If I twist it a certain way to close it down, like if you're swinging a golf club, and if you do that too hard and too fast, well, that's going to cause a significant amount of inflammation right there. That inflammation is a cause of pain. So we may either inject that joint to take just to take down the inflammation or if things have gone too far which is often the case the joint is really worn out then i might find a little nerve to that that goes to that joint i might destroy that nerve using a, a type of laser we use heat to find the nerve and actually burn the tiny little nerve that goes to that joint that's not these big nerves these big nerves are the nerves that go into your leg and your butt but there's a tiny little nerve that goes into these joints and we'll find those nerves and we'll kill them using a laser and that can give people relief for a year or two. It's a really, really nice treatment if that's your condition. Guys are leaving on, uh, well, as soon as COVID goes away, uh, the rest, the whole world's going to go on a golf trip. So I imagine you're going to have a lot of business uh, when the vaccine finally takes hold. Let's talk to Dr. Sean Condor Murray. Doctor, we're going into the holiday tomorrow. And uh, you and I have talked many times about you like to treat the entire person, the body, mind, soul, that kind of thing, uh, health-wise, uh, wellness. Um, what do you want to say to people going into Thanksgiving? So I think, you know, I don't want to be like the, the um, 
the government. I don't want to be like, you know, your father telling you what to do. Everybody's got to make their decisions on their own. But, you know, I think that m- most everyone I'm talking to, my patients, my family members, you know, they're having a very muted Thanksgiving this year. They're choosing not to travel out like the way they used to. They're not going out to meet their um, family and friends because of um, the risk of transmitting the co- coronavirus to your family members, especially to the older members, right? Thanksgiving is a time where families get together. You've got your parents, you've got the, your grandparents, you've got kids. So you don't want to put those grandparents and older, older parents at risk by giving them um, the virus. You know, so what I would say is I don't want to, again, tell people what to do, but they've all heard it. Um, the recommendations are don't have a very large gathering. You know, stick to your, your, your nuclear family, people who you see all the time anyway. And if you happen to have like a, an uncle that's over or a cousin that's over, try to wear masks and socially distance in your house if you can. You know, I mean, I, I, what my plan had been was we were supposed to have my son and his girlfriend come over. Now my older boys aren't coming for Thanksgiving. They live in the, on the East Coast up in, in New York and Rhode Island. They're not coming because flying is just, they, they decided it's going to be too hard to fly. Um, you're trying, flying out of a New York airport and then landing in O'Hare is, is just a disaster. I mean, I, I've had friends who flew out, who've flown out this week for whatever reason. And, and it is, there's no social distancing going on in an, in an airport. Midway might be better, but not O'Hare. And I sure wouldn't want to travel today or tomorrow. It's going to be really cra- crazy. Doctor, so they're not coming, so, but so, had they come, uh, my plan had been, so normally we have one table. We all sit at one big table. We all sit close together. We have fun. This year I was planning and taking out these, um, these kind of uh, temporary tables. I have three tables in my basement that are folding tables. I was going to take them out. I was going to put me, my wife, and my son who live together at one table, put my um, other son and his girlfriend at another table, put my brother and his family at another table. So we're all like in the same open area looking at each other, but we're not right next to each other. And then when we're not eating, try to stay away from each other so you don't have to um, potentially infect each other. But, you know, I think the reality, Jim, is people have pandemic fatigue, right? I mean, people have been dealing, we've all been dealing with this for eight or nine months now. And there are some who believe, for example, that masks are helpful and some who believe that masks are not helpful. And while they might stick to the rules for a while, after a while, they let their guard down and maybe we don't take it as seriously anymore. Uh, But the reality is, at some point, I think the entire country is going to get this infection, either through the virus itself, or they're going to get vaccinated and get get away with it. But it's a highly contagious virus, and it's going to go everywhere eventually. It's pretty much touching every little town in America right now. We're talking to Dr. Sean Condor-Murray. Doctor, so let's address that point. I, I know you've been in the business for a while, and you like to address the wellness and the whole and the whole person. Okay, so just I, you could use yourself. You're not going to see your kids. It's going to be different. There's only going to be a few, a couple of you, and and that's it. And it's going to affect you emotionally. Uh, you know, mine is affecting me emotionally. I'm not going to see everybody I normally see. It's normally 25 people. I think it's going to be four. And that is a huge change emotionally. And then even tomorrow, I've got a guy coming in to be here for people because i got a lot of callers that are calling in and saying, I can't see anybody tomorrow. I'm eating Thanksgiving dinner alone. You know, just kind of talk about that. Yeah, that's a serious point that isn't spoken about much, Jim. I mean, look, at Thanksgiving, you, you, you have a lot of people who live alone who are somewhat socially isolated. And they may come to a Thanksgiving dinner and meet family that they haven't met all year or meet people that they haven't met all year. And that's very, that's good for them. It's good to get out and be in front of people. And that's not going to happen this year, right? They're going to be stuck at home and they're going to be isolated more and they're going to get more depressed. And when you're alone at home and you're depressed, if you've got alcohol within reach, you're going to reach for that alcohol. It's happening all over America. People are drinking more. People are using more drugs. Um, We have an increase in suicides. We have an increase. We had, we had, we were getting control of the whole opioid epidemic um, last year. It was, it was starting to wane off a little bit. Uh, now we have more and more opioid abuse and deaths from opioids. I mean, we have people who are, who are overdosing, maybe dying, maybe being saved. I mean, all these things are, are a result of this COVID-19 epidemic that we're in or pandemic that we're in. Social isolation is a huge problem. Uh, and 
not having a place to go is is something that's a serious thing. I think especially among young people, young people are typically more resilient. Uh, but it, imagine if you're a 25 year old or a 30 year old and, and you, you aren't dating anyone right now. So you're not really in a long term relationship. You can't meet anybody because, you know, even if you're on um, on different um, apps to try dating apps, you really can't actually meet anyone. So then you're going home every day. Maybe you're not even going to work. You're working from home. You don't have your boyfriend or girlfriend there or your significant other. This is going on week after week, month after month after month. I mean, how depressing. Naturally, for a young person, that's very, very tough. They may not have the coping skills that you or I, you or I might have in that sort of situation. So I really, really feel for some of these kids who don't have a significant other. You know, And I think that this is the one time, regardless of how you feel about it, I think uh, if you aren't married, it's probably a good thing to be living together with somebody. Some significant other, because at least you have someone. Yeah, some of my more uh, heavily Catholic listeners are going, ah. Yeah, they, but, and, you know, and believe me, I'm not like I don't, it's not that I totally support it, but you know, our kids are our kids, and this is a, this is the new world. This is how it is, and I'd rather be I'd rather they be mentally strong and um, psychologically healthy than than uh, stick to these strong moral codes and not be with somebody because of some religious or moral code. Doctor, you're, we're talking to, uh, if you're driving around, we're talking to Dr. Sean Conda Murray, and uh, we're just kind of going around a number of topics, uh, and it always comes back to COVID right now here on the day before Thanksgiving in 2020. Doctor, your thoughts on the upcoming vaccine? Yeah, so obviously lots of controversy, right, Jim? I remember reading not too long ago that perhaps 40% of America says they won't take the vaccine. Oh, it's, it, you know, in some areas, it's quite a bit higher, including in your field, a lot of nurses are saying they won't take it. Many nurses are saying they won't take it, but many, many, many more are saying they will take it. Um, there, it, it I think it breaks down to two, there's two things here, Jim. You have a certain percentage of the population that is against vaccination all the way across the board. You know, we call them anti-vaxxers. They don't believe in vaccination for our children. So they're naturally not going to be on board for this vaccine either. Then you have people who, who believe in vaccination for their children. They believe in that whole concept, but they're concerned that maybe this vaccine was pushed out too quickly. Maybe it's not safe. Maybe the government's just shooting it out there for political reasons, and, and we can't trust the data. Uh, but if you put that aside, and we do have a little bit of faith in science, the data is very strong. I mean, there's two vaccines that just came out, some data out there on the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. And the Moderna vaccine, I mean, if you look at the data, I'm not sure, this doesn't really get spoken about a lot, but 30,000 people were tested in the scientific trial. So out of 30,000 people, 15,000 people got the vaccine, 15,000 people got a placebo. And a placebo means sort of like a fake vaccine. They didn't really get the vaccine, but they didn't know if they got it or not. And the people that got it didn't know if they got it or not. And then they looked at these 30,000 people. And in the 15,000 people who received the vaccine, only 90 people got corona, were actually sick. 90 out of 15,000. And those 90 who did not get fully protected by the vaccine, of those 90, none of them were that seriously sick. So that's where you get that 99.5% um, efficacy rate. So 99.5% of the people were healthy and safe after getting the vaccine. They did not get coronavirus. They did not get complications. So when that's the case, if the, if the FDA now looks at that data and if they approve this vaccine, I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to be the first in line to get it. Well, that's where I was headed. He's Dr. Sean Condemary, the first in line to get it. Doctor, I will I'm, definitely be. You know, and um, you know, I, I'm hoping that, you know, by the time we're doing this and like, March that you know the situation is considerably different maybe let's push it back to April or May do you have that kind of hope I think so I, I have a feeling that by the summer at least things are going to be a lot better than they are now all right there it is Dr. Sean Connor by next month I mean our hospitals for example community hospital right here they already have the back they have they're one of the five hospitals in the state that's going to be dispensing the vaccine as soon as it's approved and they have it they have the cold storage facilities available to provide that vaccine to patients. So as soon as they get that okay, which could literally be in a couple of weeks, potentially, that vaccine is going to get started. You're going to start rolling it out in phases. Phase one will be 
you know, to healthcare workers, um, frontline healthcare workers, people who live in nursing homes, police, firemen, people who are, you know, who do jobs like that. And then it's going to go down the line. And by the time you get to phase two and phase three, hopefully by the middle of next year, we have everybody vaccinated. There it is. Let's end on that hopeful note Mm -hmm. because uh, we have been doing this uh, uh, get together here on Zoom and uh, on the radio for a long time when there wasn't a lot of hope to end on at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. We always end with your uh, your four prong uh, approach uh, to trying to stay well. Can you give it to that? Uh, can sure. you give it to us? Yeah, go ahead. Um, and this is these four, if you follow these four this four prong approach, you have a very good, a very strong likelihood to be healthy and and reduce your risk of getting coronavirus and also reduce your risk of getting sick if you should get it, and certainly obviously not seriously sick. And those are you want to eat less, and that's all about nutrition. Eat less encompasses all about the nutrition. You want to move more. That talk, we talk about physical activity and exercise and the importance of staying physically fit. And you want to, so you want to eat less, you want to move more, you want to stress less. And that has a lot to do with our internally. We're talking about meditation, we're talking about yoga, we're talking about a calmer mind. You want to stress less. And number four would be you want to love more. Um, you want to have, a, have more gratitude in life. You want to believe that things are the, stre- the, the, the stresses or the, um, the obstacles that are put in front of you are put in front of you. Not, they're not, it's not happening to you. It's happening for you. And you're, if you, if you have the right sort of um, approach to life, uh, an approach of gratitude and appreciation, you'll handle those things better and those things will make you stronger. So again, in summary, eat less, move more, stress less, and love more. Send it right there. We'll see you after the holiday, doctor. Have a good Thanksgiving. Jim, have a great Thanksgiving. Have a great Thanksgiving, everybody out there. Be safe and be healthy. All right. There it is, Dr. Sean Condor murray He is with Midwest Interventional Spine Specialists. And I just like talking to him, man. He's got a good attitude about life. He doesn't want to just, you know, obviously gets very excited about the spine, to be honest with you. And But he is also tries to take the whole person and has concern about people. Uh, coming up to the Thanksgiving holiday. Usually, we're just sitting here going, hey, man, don't eat so much and try to eat just a little bit less. This time, we're just trying to get people from Wednesday to Friday. And uh, we are with you. And here on WJOB, it is going to be this. I'm done right now for a little while. And I may be back doing a little sports on Friday. Uh, Who knows? Uh, but tomorrow on Thanksgiving, we're going to have a family get together here, and it's going to be from 10 to 12, and it will be Dave Ennis and Gino Sferusa. They're coming in at my request to just be a family here, and that's what we have. And they will be here playing good music. Give them a call, 219 845 If you want to leave them a message, you can download the Hey Jet app. 